Okay, welcome back. Tonight we're going to talk about two things uh, in particular. One is, well, the theme for the, for the evening is hearing God's voice. Okay? And I get a lot of questions over the years. How do I know if it's God speaking? How do I know if it's not just my mind telling me things? How do I know if I hear anything at all? Um, so we're going to talk about that. And then as part of that theme, uh, toward the end of this uh, of, of the teaching time, we're going to talk about discerning signs and what signs mean, um, how we interpret them, so on, uh, as part of God speaking to us. We want to look, start by looking at the soul versus the spirit, and we touched on that last week. I just want to go a little bit further into it this week. The soul, if, um, remember, is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And that's what most biblical scholars agree on these days. And then the spirit is that part of us which is capable of joining with God's spirit. And both have a function. The soul tends to observe and collect information. And the spirit, our spirit, joined with God's spirit, interprets that information. And that's where prophetic um, and spiritual gifting comes in. A checklist. So there are several things that we have to watch for when we're trying to decide if we're hearing God's voice. One is, well, I'll just read them through, wisdom or word, the word of God, wisdom, and does it resonate with the person you're speaking to? And is there confirmation? So the word, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, then we're on thin ice. It must line up. It must not contradict the word of God. Wisdom, so what's wisdom? Well, wisdom is something that we learn and it doesn't necessarily ha happen just because we get older. Um, making the same mistake for a long lifetime doesn't mean the person has experience. It means they just learned how to make the same mistake over and over. So wisdom brings in teaching, mentoring, learning from our mistakes, all of that. Um, Feedback and correction help wisdom grow. The, the Bible in a couple of different places refers to instruction and correction. Okay? And those are very important. Um, in a home group that I was part of in, in Kamloops, we, we've been going for a long time and we had kind of an unwritten rule. And we would mention this from time to time just to make sure everyone was on the same page. And that was that you're ready to prophesy when you're ready to receive feedback and correction from those who've gone before. So that's the important bit. Wisdom and feedback and correction help wisdom grow. So this little guy, I'm just, I saw, and I'm thinking, I hope his parents gave him some feedback on that. <laughs> Does it resonate? If I give a, a prophetic word to someone, and they say, nah, it doesn't ring any bells. No, it's, it must be mistaken. I leave it. I don't take it any further. And there are several reasons for that. One is, I could be wrong. That happens. Another is that the person isn't ready to receive it. The, another reason could be that it's not for that purpose. God may be saying something to me about someone, but the purpose might not be to speak it out to that person. It might be in preparing my heart for something yet to come. And I had that experience where I gave a word to someone that I didn't know, and the person said, no, that, that doesn't connect with me at all. I thought, okay, I must be wrong. A couple of days later, I got a call from a friend of mine who was present and who knew this person very well and said, what you said was 100% right on, dead on. She's just not ready to receive it. And then, so then I started asking, so God, why did you show me that? It wasn't until several years later, I was in a ministry situation and this person was there. And suddenly I, that experience from years before helped me to understand why this person was functioning and behaving the way she was today. And that was from several years ago. So the purpose of God showing me that was so that I could understand this person better be a better mentor, be, uh, come alongside and, and, and just help to, to guide and to steer. 
not to say anything about it. And so that's something I've learned about listening to God, is that it's not always about telling the person what you've heard. Um, and confirmation. Confirmation doesn't always happen, but if you give a prophetic word to someone, you speak to, into someone's life, and several people around you that are hearing it say, yes, I'm sensing the same thing. That's a, that's a pretty good sign that you're on the right track. If no, it doesn't mean that if no one says anything that you're on the wrong track. It just means that, that that's a good sign. And I, I, kinda, I should have put that in brackets because it, the, the first three are really the ones that are, are critical. Um, line up with the word, is it wise, and does it resonate? So the essential in, in hearing the Holy Spirit, stop, look, and listen. So we stop. That means we tune out distractions, okay? We tune out distractions. Um, a number of many years ago, my good friend Eric and his brother and I were out on a horseback hunting trip up north. And it was a two-day trek into where we were going, and that night along the trail, we stopped and camped by a very noisy river. Our horses were just going crazy. We had them tethered, and, and they just wouldn't stop making a racket. And like about 2 o'clock in the morning, Eric's brother, Terry, says, I think I know what's wrong. They depend on their ears for safety, and they can't hear anything because of the noise, because of the river. So we got up in the middle of the night and we took our horses up to a plateau um, up on the side of the mountain, a big, plat big grassy field that we had come through, we saw it there, and we hobbled them and turned them loose and they were dead quiet after that, not a sound. The noise was distracting to the point that they couldn't focus on just eating grass and being quiet. It was, it, and, and so that's another lesson that I learned in hearing God's voice. We, there can be so much noise in our life that we can't hear him. I shared last week about, um, I think about the plane that I built and how it was therapeutic while I did it, but it would have become noise if I'd held on to it any longer. And I knew that. Um, and now we want to talk just briefly about posturing. So, Interesting thing happened this morning. Jeff was speaking, and he talked about posturing and, and being receptive. What, what he didn't, I had already given my flash drive to him, but he hadn't looked at it yet, of course, because there's no time. What he didn't know was that th those topics are included in tonight's uh, t talk. And that's a, a good illustration of a spiritual gift referred to as word of knowledge. Where he, had, he may not have realized that it was that at the time, but the Holy Spirit must have spoken to him because that's more than coincidental. Those aren't common everyday words, right? Um, posturing and, and, um, and, and being receptive. And yet those two things were in the flash drive that he was carrying around in his pocket. In Genesis 24, there's the story of Abraham, or the story of Abraham's servant, who has been commissioned by Abraham to go out and find a bride for Isaac. He parks by a well. And why does he do that? It tells us why he did it. It's because that's where the young women come out to draw water in the evening. So in the evening, he made sure he was by the well. And then what he was telling the family later, when he's recounting the whole story, he says, I, being in the way the Lord led me, positioned himself or postured himself to receive something from God. If he had just gone off to some other town just randomly, he said, ah, maybe I'll wait for, see, what, see who walks by over here. It, he wouldn't have found Rebecca. But he postured himself, his I being in the way, I being in the right place, in other words, the Lord led me, he came along and led me. And that, that's an important concept in, in posturing yourself. I'm a strong proponent of prophetic words being spoken within a context of, of a church or a, or a Christian group where people are known. And I think that's important. It can, be, it can happen outside of that, and it does a lot. And I've spoken into lots of people's lives outside of the church context. But that's an important thing to consider. Now, for people who are just starting out and maybe haven't walked in that, in, in that, um, in that kind of... Um, gifting before, 
um, it's a good idea to be with someone who has. It's just, it's just a good thing. It's same, like, same as learning anything else. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm not a musician particularly. I love music, and, and Brian says I'm a musician, but um, I'll never be the kind of musician that like Brian or some of, the, some of the people we have in the church here, they're amazing musicians. But what I have learned, I've learned from people sitting beside me, people coming alongside of me to teach me and to mentor me. And that's, that, that holds true for the spiritual gifting as well. So we stop, we tune out distractions, noise, we posture ourselves to hear. And then in, um, in 1 Timothy 1.8, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, Uh, Paul speaking to Timothy, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. So when someone speaks a prophetic word over us and it passes the checklist that we looked at earlier, then we need to posture ourselves because it's not just a one-off thing that we can say, oh, that was nice and forget about it. Um, It's something that we need to consider and ask God about does this fit me? If it does, then we need to position ourselves to, to receive that and, and, to, and to grow and walk in that, in that, in what was given to us. In Genesis, I being in the way, in other words, posturing or positioning myself, the Lord led me. Important principle in hearing God. So, so we've looked at the stop. Now we're going to look at the look. <laughs> Discerning signs. So signs are not a shortcut to prophecy. They um, require interpretation, and interpretation requires spiritual discernment. In Matthew, and I I alluded to this last time, I think in Matthew um, chapter 16, Jesus says, you know know how to interpret the signs in the sky. You know if it's red sky in the evening, it's going to be a nice day tomorrow. And if it's red sky in the morning, there's a storm coming. He says, so... Why are you having so much difficulty interpreting the signs of the times? Signs are important. Um, and again, the soul collects the information, makes the observations, but our spirit, joined to God's spirit, interprets those signs, what they mean. And, and they generally have a deeper meaning than just the obvious. We say red sky at night, I think how's it going? Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. I think that's what I learned in in, in elementary school. Anyway, it's much more than that. That is true, but the implication, the interpretation for our lives, for our as Christians, goes much, much deeper than that. Tonight, we're going to look at uh, discernment of signs, and I asked you all to bring something special with you, and we're going to be using those in a in just shortly here. Um, Just before we do, I just want to go to the next slide, and listen. So listen for the Holy Spirit's interpretation. Does it align with biblical principles? Is it wise to give this word in this situation? And the example I gave you, in retrospect, I should not have given that word. I should have just said, Lord, what is this about? And I think he would have shown me, this is not for now. This is just for something you, for you to put on the back burner, and, and the time will come when you'll need this. Um, is it wise to give this word in the situation? If it's going to embarrass someone, it's not wise and, and that's not the time to give it. If it's going to put someone on the spot in a way that, that, that is going to make them um, unnecessarily uncomfortable, then that's not the time to give it. Or maybe it's not to give it to them at all, as we talked about earlier. And does it resonate with a person? Does the person say, oh, yeah. I was at a, um, um, a prophetic meeting there's a girl, and she's, she's sitting there in this circle, and she's smiling, and everything looks just fine. And I felt God's Spirit say, that smile is covering up some deep, deep pain. And so when things got around to her, I just said, you know, feel that there's some real serious pain going on. And she just broke down, and she wept, and, and I'm just torn, and just like life has just collapsed around her. And I said to her, can I give you a father's hug? And I just put my arms around her and just held her like I would my own daughter. 
didn't say a whole lot to her. But after the session was over, she came up to me and she says, you have no idea how hopeful I feel now and how much better I feel. Thank you. Speaking and acting prophetically doesn't necessarily mean we have to say a lot. Our actions can speak a lot as well. And in that case, I sensed in my spirit, she just needed a daddy. And so I was that to her that evening and it changed things for her. And does it resonate with the person? Well, it certainly resonated with this young lady. And, and uh, so that's always, that's probably one of the most important questions that we can ask someone that we're speak, whose life we're speaking into. Does it resonate? Does this sound like this is something you're going through? or that it relates to something in your life. Um, and don't be discouraged if they say, yeah, no, not, not really. Like we said, it can be a number of reasons why someone might say that. Our job isn't to fix people, right? Our job is to be faithful to what God speaks to us. And one of the hardest lessons that I probably had to learn in terms of, of walking up my Christian walk is I used to think that if I pray for someone for healing, they better get healed or God's gonna look really bad and I gotta make God look good. I realized later that it wasn't about making God look good, it was about making me look good. And then I came to understand that that's totally the wrong track to think in. My job is to speak out what God says for me to speak and if he directs me to pray for someone for healing, I need to do that. The results have nothing to do with me. And that was a huge release for me. It released me from this sense of pseudo responsibility, having to kind of make God look good. I didn't have to do that anymore. And that was a big relief. Uh, a couple of slides ago, we were talking about this, discerning the signs. There are many signs that all of us carry all the time. And the easiest way to introduce this idea, if it's not something you're accustomed to, is to have an object, like hopefully you brought with you tonight. An object that is significant to you for some reason, means something to you. And in our groups, what I want you to do is to... Take that object one at a time and just, just explain briefly what that object means to you. Why is it significant to you? And then let the rest of the group listen for what else that sign means. There's the obvious, like remember when we talked about the red sky and all that, there's the obvious sign. Yeah, red sky uh, at night, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. Red in the morning, storm coming. The person tells you the significance of that item now allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you about that person's item and see what comes up. And I think it'll be very interesting. We'll just do a little demonstration of, of, of speaking and praying prophetically. I've known or met Megan about a year ago when we started coming here and I don't know her well and just getting to know people, um, but I've observed some things, okay? I've observed how you prepare so well when you're teaching. You are totally prepared, at least I think you are. And then I see you go off to Africa and you're excited about that. And you come back with some amazing stories. So that's all the stuff that the soul absorbs. That's the information that I get from my, in my soul, right? My mind observes it and, and collects that information. My spirit says, you are a visionary. You have a visionary gift. You see over mountains and around corners to what God is doing on the other side that isn't necessarily visible to the person who just absorbs or just, just observes or collects information with the soul. And, and I believe that your visionary gift is going to continue to grow. It's going to open up areas for you that you haven't even imagined yet because you're faithful in following the vision that you have now. And, and, and the parable uh, in the Bible about the different amounts of money that the, that the, 
that the um, owner of the vineyard gives to people. At the end, it says, this person got this much. I'm gonna, you doubled it. Here's your reward. And the more we are entrusted with, the more expectation there is on. And you've been faithful with what you've been given. And so I believe that God is going to continue to give even more. And um, I can hardly wait to see. All right. So let me, let me just pray over you about that. Okay. So Father, I, we just thank you for Megan. We thank you for the gift of teaching that you've given her. We thank you for her faithfulness in carrying out that gift. We thank you for her willingness to follow you even when she may be tired, um, maybe even exhausted sometimes, but she walks through that um, knowing that she is doing what you've called her to do. And we pray together as a body that the vision will grow. The vision will grow as she grows in handling the vision. Bless you. I feel like I, I could feel the, the presence of the Lord when you were mm -hmm. speaking, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and sometimes the word itself, the actual message might not be something that a person's been thinking about necessarily for a while, but if you posture yourself to receive that and you go home and over the weeks and months in that, and that uh, rattles around in your head and the vision starts to grow and, and the, the gifting that's attached to it starts to grow. And, that, and that's one of the ways in which prophetic prayer and speaking um, works. Is there something to, you know, when you receive a word and you go home and you write, write it, it out? To the, so that you can recount, like... Tim it's a really good idea. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Actually, the last time I did this exercise with the objects, I had everybody write out right. their, their um, what they felt for that person. And that, I would, yeah, thanks. I would encourage you to do that if you have a paper and pen or a notebook or something and just write out what you're hearing God say for that person that's just talked about their particular significant object. Thanks. Okay. Everything about us says something about us. Um, the things we wear, the, the things we like or don't like, the things that, that, um, that catch our interest, the things that we put our time into, all of those things say something about us. And all that information is collected again by the soul and our spirit, joined to God's spirit says, here's what it means. I, I'm, I'm going to go back to that, to that example from Matthew. The red sky means this. And then Jesus said, why are you having trouble understanding the signs around you, the signs of the times? These things, I'm not saying that everything tells us something that the person has to hear. But when we make that transition from listening to the soul to listening to the Holy Spirit, then we start to hear things. This could mean something. Now, I observed these things. Now, it wasn't a thing in the case of Megan. It was just the way she has conducted herself uh, that I've observed since I've been here. And to me, as I, as I pray into that and as I ask God what that means, I hear him saying, She's visionary. Um, sometimes an artist uh, has this blank piece of paper and they don't know where to go. It's like, I don't know what to draw. It's just like this blank page. Or you've heard about a writer. Let's get this blank page. I don't know what I'm supposed to write about. And, and so sometimes if a writer has been given, well, actually, um, a father and her son, and his son, they're going to go fishing, and they have a wonderful day. Start there. All of a sudden, that's focused you on something that now you can start and just sort of like, okay, where is this going? And so, the object is something that is special to someone. Yeah. And so, it's sort of like, Okay, what, how does God 
kind of view this situation? Like, why, why is that special? Like, how is God seeing that? And so, it's, so that person, this is special to them, and God may, go, may be saying, yeah, this is why, but then there's more. And so it's actually, it's, it's a starting point. It's giving you a starting point for hearing how God sees this person and how he wants them to be. Thanks. Yeah, that I think that was yeah better than I could explain. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, a starting point I think is key there. If you're not familiar and well experienced in walking in prophetic gifting and hear in, in hearing God in that way, this is a perfect starting place, like you said, because it's you're dealing with something tangible, and and seeing how the Holy Spirit can use that to speak to or about someone. Okay. As we grow in that gifting, we start to, well, we continue to do that, but we start to hear things without the objects, without the visible signs. That's where Jesus started. He talked about the red sky. And, and he was using a sign as a starting point for understanding what the Holy Spirit is saying. Prophecy is available to everybody. Yeah, I think it is because um, the Apostle Paul was talking about that and he said, um, yeah, you know, a lot of you are speaking in tongues, you know, odd languages. That's fine, but I would much rather that you prophesy. He's saying that to everybody. He also, there, there are also a couple of references in the Bible about asking for gifts, that we can ask for, for gifts. A lot of times I have found that people carry gifts that have never been unwrapped. There's this big closet full of gifts. They're all stacked up in there, nice and neat. The wrappers are still on. The ribbons are still perfect. They just never look to see what's in them. And so there comes the unwrapping and the identifying of the gift. And sometimes uh, mentoring and learning from the, the word and so on is required in order to learn how to use that gift. But that's all part of the process. Yeah, Brian. Uh, what was coming to me is 1 Corinthians 14. But the spirit of prophecy is for strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. New Testament prophecy. I'll say to people, can you strengthen, encourage, and comfort? What, anybody in this room, can you do that? Of course you can. You've been doing it your whole life. It's a New Testament prophetic ministry. It is, yes. In fact, we were talking about that last week. I gave you the example of my friend who went to Mexico with us and he, who told us that he had no gifts, no spiritual gifts and no spiritual authority, right? And those are exactly the things that we identified in him. Have you ever encouraged anyone? Oh yeah. Have you comforted and so on? And he's okay, I get the idea. And then I told you about what happened in Mexico and how he rose to the surface and started to walk in his gifting and his authority and a young man came to Christ as a result of that. Let's go into the groups and um, start the process. Um, if one of you could take your object and just briefly explain the significance to you of that and then see what the people in your group have to say about it. Um, let's just pray before we do that. So Father, um, I'm gonna ask that your Holy Spirit would give revelation to every person here tonight that uh, as they look at these things, that they will see much more than the object, that they will see the person's heart who owns that object, and, and not only the significance to them, but maybe significance in a broader term that they haven't even understood yet. So we ask for revelation tonight in Jesus' name.